Okay, we are live. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ahura Z, and welcome to Ask the Unicorn. As I said, I'm Ahura Z, and this is Kazi. Hello. The Masked Avenger. The Masked Dork. Today is April 22nd, 2015, and it is episode 67. Now, what she was really saying was, no. What I was really saying was, <laughs> well, I hope there are a lot of questions oh, today. I, I have. <laughs> we should do a Star Wars theme show. Right. Please. That's fine. I don't mind. Can we have special guests? I'll be Lando Calarizian. I want to talk to you all about Minoxidil. Uh, where my my tegus? <laughs> my Twi'lek tegus? <laughs> Legus? I yes. Tegus and, and I'm Jedi Ohura Z Jen. What? You just made that up. One. Yes. I made it up. That's what the whole Jedi thing is, made up. So anyway, <clears throat> I'd like to give a shout out to all of the independent filmmakers that are in New England, uh, particularly in Maine, and you all know who you are. And uh, I know that there are a lot of really good films coming out this, this year, and I'm very anxious to see them all, including the one that I am creating, and that is Falkir, that will be coming out uh, summer. And... Um, we're looking forward to it. Really? Almost done. Yes, it is almost done. All we have to do is finish those few scenes and it will be done. You know, as you all know, I am opening a bakery. It, uh, at the moment, it's called Daily Bread Low Sodium Bakery, and it has low sodium organic bakery. Um, <clears throat> and it's in Spanish, and uh, we are painting right now and fixing up some things because the last people that left really didn't care much about the place evidently and uh, we're correcting that and making it look wonderful i want to create an environment that when people come in for their baked goods and tea and coffee and and things like that that they can relax enjoy themselves for those that are college students you come in and i will ensure a safe environment that you can sit for a while uh, <coughs> excuse me sit for a while and have something to eat and at the same time be able to do your studies in peace and uh, we are making sure that it is a totally comfortable environment. Uh, for those of you that uh, do come, we will be very welcoming to you and hopefully you will like it. Now, I'm also campaigning to raise funds for this particular thing. I have raised enough funds to secure the building and the equipment and all that good stuff, but I need more equipment. I'm, I'm working on getting a bread oven. So if you can go to the, the uh, Indiegogo page, and uh, look up Daily Bread Low Sodium Bakery, and you can contribute. So tell your friends, please. Uh, it will it will be a wonderful experience for all. Okay, I also plan on working with local food pantries and <clears throat> homeless shelters to help ease the strain that the city has to help the homeless and also help those that need food. So please, this is all really good. It's not only uh, a good product, and it's also for a good, good cost. So we're planning on opening in June. And uh, we do hope to see you at the grand opening. Now, without further ado, it is time to get on with the show. The unicorn is in, and I am listening. All right. We're going to pick up from last week. Michelle's question was, could you explain the Kundalini life force and its purpose? <clears throat> the Kundalini is exactly what yeah, that is, the life force. The life force. It is that thing, that, that energy that keeps you alive, that makes it so that you can be alive and grow. It is that, that force that lays dormant in you and then activates itself at a certain point in time and enables you to not only evolve, but to grow and to live. That's plain and simple what it is. To learn about the Kundalini and how to be able to um, use the benefits that it has for you, it's a really interesting thing because you know, the, the Kundalini does have all of these wonderful attributes for you. They, the Kundalini is what goes through up through your chakras that causes your chakras to be the way that they are. It's like you have access to it, but you don't at the same time until you become aware of it and then learn how to deal with your own life force. That's something that all of us should 
learning. It's, it's interesting. These things should be taught in regular curriculum, but they're not. Well, not unless you're wearing yoga pants, but I'm just saying <laughs> it should be taught in regular curriculum. It would help everyone to understand their own life force. Uh, it's self-explanatory. It is exactly the life force. And there are many different philosophies if you really want to learn uh, the particulars of that philosophy there are people that can teach you specifically about the kundalini i'm one of them that can teach you but it, it takes longer than a 60 minute show to tell you about it let's just simply su suffice it to say that it is what runs every single part of you and without your kundalini you would not be and that kundalini is in direct connection to the grand kundalini which is the life force of this world and the life force of this galaxy and the life force of or excuse me life force of the solar system life force of this galaxy and the life force of this universe and, and so on and so on and so on so pretty self-explanatory it is a life force you said it all in the sentence when you asked about it it's just that you don't know it yet and little by little you are learning so hope that helps you out what else have you got we have a question from Lynn Langevin. She asks, I've been having significant relationship problems. Are there external, <coughs> are there external forces working against us or does he just not appreciate me? No, he's just incompatible with you. Um, that's what it comes down to. You know, people like to believe that there's some outside forces interfering with their relationships. Did you ever think that sometimes that that particular relationship is not for you? Or that the two of you may be okay people, but you're just not good together. <laughs> and that's okay. That's all right. You can make different decisions. And if you keep having those same significant problems or those same problems with your relationship, you're not looking at something. Okay? You're not accepting something. You keep attracting the same type of people over and over and over again, and you have yet another failed relationship. It's because you need to change who you are deciding to enter into a relationship with. Pure and simple, that's just the way that it is. And you know, there, there's no demon that is waiting outside for you to get into a relationship and saying, Lynn, I'm going to interfere with your relationships. No, <laughs> it's really simple. All you have to do is stop for a moment. First, evaluate whether or not you are ready for a relationship and then even when you are ready for a relationship do you really want a relationship and if you do really want a relationship are you capable of handling the nuance that a relationship does have yeah i can't tell you how many times i have listened to questions similar to that one that you just asked and i i might as well go ahead and do this you because i have a bone to pick with women okay <laughs> you guys made some really screwed up choices <laughs> in your relationships and then try to justify your relationships that are failing okay you make magnificently screwed up decisions okay things don't go right in your relationship things don't go right in your life your body falls apart your whole life falls apart every single thing that you were is no longer and then what you have to look forward to is absolutely flipping nothing. And then you wonder whether or not there's some external force that's interfering with that failed relationship. Stop. Stop for a moment. Why you got to go and run out and get into a relationship in the first place? Oh, that's right. And that's what's expected of you. You don't have to do that. How about you build a relationship with yourself first? And it may take years to do that. But when you do build that relationship and it is successful, you will have a successful working relationship with yourself and can therefore determine what it is that you need in another person. It's the most amazing. It, and when I see people going, go on the internet today, I, I, you know, all I think is, well, I, I, I used to be a lot more flagrant in what I think, but I'm, I've calmed down a bit. So I'm going to say it this way. That's really stupid. It's really like totally stupid. You can't find a relationship for yourself. So you got to have someone go and look on the freaking internet for you to find a relationship. How absolutely stupid is that? 
Not only that, you let someone else talk to you into having a relationship with someone. <clears throat> Again, stupid. If you cannot make up your own mind to deal with a relationship, and you can't make up your own mind to, to find your own relationship, rather than having a friend introduce you, or someone you met on the internet, or your friend's sister's husband's cousin's brother, and you wonder why it's not working out, it is because you have overstepped this one vital element in forming any kind of relationship. It is intelligence. <laughs> you have got to stop before you decide to enter into some relationship. And believe you me, I've heard some absolute doozies, just doozies. These people come in and they tell me these horror stories and I have to sit there and that's usually when I give them a look and they say, well, what is, is there something wrong with me? Or, or why doesn't he see how much I love him? Maybe she's not capable. What's that one thing? Maybe he's just not into you <laughs> and that's okay. There's so many other people that can be into you, but first you gotta be into you. You be into you first, okay? There have been tons of people that would drag some guy to me for a reading with them. And I'm just, I'm always diplomatic, but I am always honest. And I will tell them, listen, yeah, I know that you two think that you really are supposed to be together, but you're not compatible in any way, shape or form. But that's okay. You got together and you think you can make a go of it. I'm rooting for you. Not every guy you meet just because you have a psychic connection is your soulmate. Sure. Okay? That goes for you guys too, man. You just do some really silly things. You know, I I know that she's my soulmate. Well, does she know that she's your soulmate? Wait, guys do that too. Oh, yeah, they do that. <laughs> Does she know she, she's your soulmate? I laugh. Seriously. Okay, this whole soulmate thing, yes. You have soulmates are real, okay? But not every person you meet is your soulmate. Not just because you met someone with the same name as you did that make them your soulmate. Or because you saw the person in a town where there's only one store and you saw them three times, that does not mean that they're, they're your soulmate, okay? You do not have a psychic connection because you went to the same theater. That whole, just stop it. Back up, take a look at things from an, object, an objective standpoint and say, okay, do I want this? Yes, I want this. And then take responsibility for it because if it stops working, you don't want it. Everyone, repeat after me. If it stops working, you don't want it. A relationship is not supposed to be hard work. I don't care what you've read. I don't care what the person who's divorced, who's a marriage counselor told you. I don't want a hard, hard relationship. I don't want to work hard in a relationship. See, I don't work hard to do this. So why should my relationship be any harder? No, 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 you don't, no. Let's get rid of some illusions right now. I'm, I'm sorry, I know that I'm ranting, but I'm going to. Let's get rid of some illusions right now, okay? Right now, it is time to cash all of your reality checks, okay? And I'm just the person to do it. First off, relationships are not hard work. I don't care what someone told you. Second, you do not get 50% of anything. Neither one of you gives 50-50. Where the hell did that come from? Some popsicle? You don't give 50-50 in a relationship. You both give 100%. And if you're not capable of giving 100%, then turn around and walk the other way. Forget you know each other. Don't tell me what a man is. Don't tell me what a woman is. I, I see it all the time on Facebook. I hear it. And people say, a real man would do this. And you're the one standing there with fake freaking nails. No, no, you don't know what a real man is if you're a woman because you're not one. Nor do you know what a real woman is if you're a man. Again, you are not one. You might know what a real man is. 
if you're a man. And you might know what a real woman is if you're a woman. How about you keep it at that? Neither one of you are best. Neither one of us are better. I see all the time, would the world be better if women ran it? No! No, we'd be in the same predicament. Would the world be better if men ran it? Well, you know, they do, and look at the world now. Tell me, is it so great? Is it wonderful? <laughs> it's not. So we need to get rid of some illusions. If you're into a relationship, both of you give 100%. Whatever I taught you before, one and one makes three. Okay? So if you're giving 100 and 100%, guess what? You get an added 100% from the universe, which makes a gigantic exchange thing that happens, which means that your energy winds up taking over everything, which basically means that the relationship takes care of itself. So you don't have to work. That's the whole point. You don't have to work. Yeah, you're going to go through little bickerings and arguments. Big deal. That's not work at all. You get over it. Go have some dinner, call it a day, say, hey, that was a really good one that time. Let it go. Let things go. You know, I'm not going to speak to you for a week. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> we talk all the time about what is that thing that that person asked me about? Oh, yeah, unconditional love. If you're in a relationship, you first have to know love. Okay, and be able to love for the sake of loving. If you both asked each other, what is it you love about? You know, if you asked, if your, your significant other asked you, well, what is it you love about me? You have to think of all of this crap to tell this person <laughs> <laughs> that you love about them. And then if you ask them, they have to do the same damn thing. You know what that does? That puts us, oh, did I say damn? Sorry. What that does is that puts a lot of strain on both of you. You know, here, I'll give you a simple answer. Why do you love me? Because you are. Because you're you. You're you, and you had enough of you to love me. Plain and simple. I don't ask for explanations. What well, the freak thought of that? Tell me why you love me. Because I can't think of any reason for you to love me, so I, I need you to tell me. <laughs> you know, it's like me telling, you know, having to explain to Kazi why I love her. Uh, that's <laughs> that's what she thinks of that. Different relationship. Uh, it's all the same to me. You know, love is love. It's just different nuances of love, but you're still my baby girl. Oh. <laughs> We have a question from Guest 42. Yes. Is it possible to have more than one soulmate? Our soulmates of course, you okay. have hundreds of soulmates. What? What? Are soulmates always supposed to be in a romantic relationship? No, absolutely or, not. Or are there other kinds like friendship, etc.? Yes, there are different types of soulmates. There are soulmates on a romantic end. There are soulmates for an accomplishment. There are soulmates in an association. There's a ring of soulmates. There are sibling souls there are souls that are graduating to another state of union they're all different types of soulmates for goodness sake that's what i'm saying you meet someone who's a soulmate and that person is you know a lot like you and you can actually get together and, and creatively build something does that mean that you're supposed to go out and get married no it means that you're able to build this thing and if you wind up doing something romantic you'll usually find out really quickly whether or not you're soulmates in that particular way you know but the best thing for you to do is explore exactly what a soulmate is and start of thinking that it always leads to the bedroom or the car or, <laughs> or something, you know? You really soulmate. Every time I hear someone say soulmate, you know what I think? Shoes. I just do. It's just this is a mate to that particular show. But the bottom line is this, what we all have labeled soulmate, and whoever, whoever started that whole soulmate movement, I, I need to slap somehow, okay? Because it caused a lot of people, a lot of really good people, to utterly screw up their lives trying to be with someone that they were told, that they claimed, that they thought, that they read, that they saw were their soulmates. And wound up making themselves miserable. And I've heard these stories, listen, I have counseled thousands of people, and I've sat and listened to people. Well, I know that he's my soulmate. It's just that, you know, he, 
he doesn't understand the importance of building that soul union. And he keeps trying to run away. I would run away from your loony butt too. Okay? Your soulmate is not going to run from you. Do you understand me? Okay? You can't just decide that somebody is your soulmate and think that they're going to stop getting away from you because you want to pursue them. That's called stalking. <laughs> you know, there are different types of soulmates. Yes, there really are. Companions, siblings. I've met a lot of my siblings. I've met companion souls. I've met old in other lives, people that I was in a romantic relationship with. Some ran for the hills and some didn't. A couple I ran from the hill for the hills. You know, but that's that's neither here or there. You are going to meet hundreds of people, thousands of people, maybe even millions of people, or hundreds of thousands at least. You are connected to a mass amount of people in some way, shape, or form. We are all part of this particular earth at this particular time. And you can't be a particular individual. You, yeah. <laughs> you actually, you have to see that you are in various states of oneness. And because you are various states of oneness, there are going to be other beings that are on the same level as you. And this is what we call a soulmate. Do you understand? Someone whose soul is developed to a point that is equal to your own. That is called a soulmate. Oh, boy. Does that mean that the moment you meet a person like that, you're supposed to say, hey, let's go skip off to the bedroom and make the little soulmates? No, that's not what that's about. Be more intelligent. This is exactly what I'm talking about. I have watched many beautiful, magnificent women be dragged in the mud because they wanted to go get with some stupid wugaboo. And at the same time, I've watched... Barrel magnificent men get with this foul swamp creature, you know, that just decided to drag their whole confidence down in the mud. And why? And why? Because someone told them they're supposed to be looking for their soulmate. Or because they did meet a soulmate, but they thought that that person was a soulmate they were supposed to marry. Meanwhile, they really want to be with this particular person. And I've actually seen people leave the person that they were in love with because they told they were told that this person is their soulmate, or they read something that said, well, this person happened to love the color indigo, and you love the color indigo, so that made them your soulmate because this person doesn't love the color indigo. You know what I call that? Ignorant. And actually, there are levels of ignorant that go down deep, so I just call them ignorant. You know, we have really got to get a grip when it comes to these things. We have told each other so much that the truth is barely visible on our charts, especially when it comes to relationships. You go and you seek this horoscope that says, oh, you are Aries, so you should go out and find a women eye, you know, or something like that. And you, people believe it. Instead of going to an actual astrologer, if you really want to take that route and say, listen, I would know my soulmate from a hole in the wall. Can you help me at least get a general direction of what I might be looking for in my life? <laughs> that would actually help me. <laughs> no, you want to read the paper and <laughs> say, Aries, today, stay at home for you will have a wonderful experience with a new whatever and so what do you do sit your ignorant butt at home when you know you have stuff to do because someone's bound to come knocking on your door and then at the end of the day when you're sitting there and no one is knocked on your door you wind up feeling all bad and everything it's because you listen to a stupid horoscope okay or went to a, a machine and pressed something in it uh, it did some calculations for you which machines are really good at calculations, but they don't have anything to do with substance. So listen, you have tons of soulmates out there. Not all of them are meant for you to be in a relationship together. 
Some of them are meant for business. And if you actually understood that, you might get with your soulmate and say, okay, well, we obviously are not meant to be, well, I don't know if we're meant to be in a romantic relationship, but when we get together and start talking business, stuff happens. So how about we just keep it this way? That doesn't mean we have to, can we just keep it this way? You know, so. I like money. You know, yeah, you, let's just, you know, go on and do things. And if you do wind up being romantically inclined with a person, don't try to make something else out of it. We will pressure each other too much. You know, that whole, well, we've been in a, oh, this thing. We've been in a relationship and it, you know, it hasn't gone anywhere. We need to like tie the knot. Why? 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 See, even Ling is like, what? Yeah. Listen, if you have a working relationship, don't go pressuring the guy to tell him, well, you got to buy me a ring. Screw you. I have to buy you crap. If I buy you something, it's because I want to. Stop it. And that also goes for, you know, you guys out there. You don't have to, if this woman is fine being with you, why can't you settle for that? Be with that woman the way that she is. Don't be getting mad at her because she doesn't want to marry you. Maybe you just aren't ready yet and she can see that. And at the same time, women, you don't pressure men into doing anything so that they can marry you. Because if a woman put some, if I were single and a woman put something on me and told me, well, you got to give up this and give up that, I'd say, well, I'll give you up first. And that's just the truth. And I wish all men would say the same thing. And you men that pressure women into having kids, knock it off. You have absolutely no clue what you're talking about. You don't have to carry another thing inside of you for nine months. <laughs> no, you do not. And that is the absolute truth. It should be your own decision, not based upon what your mommy wants, not based upon what your husband wants, your boyfriend wants. You know, people say, well, you know, the reason that I want to have kids is because uh, more than one kid is because, you know, they might be lonely. How the hell would you know? Get them a Seriously. dog. You know, uh, if you want to have children, that's your business. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm trying to help your relationships. You, we do everything to sabotage each other's relationship. The moment that a person decides that they don't want to be around me, they need to take a long walk off a short pier, have a Coke and a smile, and shut the hell up. Okay? Go someplace else. I mean, I am always full of love, very demonstrative, very affectionate, but I do that because I want to, not because I have to, not because this person is going to get mad at me and decide if I don't show them a certain amount of affection, they're going to go off and be with somebody else, then they don't need to be around me in the first place because they're worthless. I have heard people say, well, the reason that I cheated on them is because they drove me into his arms. Give me a break. Huh? Nobody drove you anywhere. Did you hold a gun to your head and say, you know, into my arms? And I've heard, I've heard, you know, <laughs> but sometimes I've heard guys moan and whine about some, you didn't want to fix my dinner. So what? Get up and fix your own damn dinner. <laughs> You're a grown person. You know, guys, seriously, you get, we need to stop moaning and whining. I mean, really whining. Ladies, your husband is not a child. So don't go telling people, oh, you know, I've got the two children and then I got the big child. Because that's insulting. That's really insulting. If I want to play video games, that's my damn business. Okay? If I have worked all day and I come home and I don't feel like taking the trash out right now, that is my business. You could have taken the trash out. Don't tell me raising children is a full-time job. Of course it is. Everybody knows that. But you also made the choice to have children. Comes with the territory. And you guys, you can help. It's not going to hurt you. I know that women have superpowers when it comes to holding kids, but you can try because women have like that holding baby thing. You know, I, It's called a hit. And, you know, I can bench press 350 pounds, but that kid gets really heavy. <laughs> you got to stick it on your hip. That's why women have hips. It's yeah, unfortunate. Well, whatever. You can say whatever you want to. I, 
I do a good job. I can hold the kid for a really long on my shoulders, but not this thing. And that doesn't work for me. You know, but guys, you can help out. It's not going to hurt you. It'll make you better. You'll feel really good. But at the same time, women, you don't have to moan and complain at them because that just makes us not want to do crap. You know, we need to get along with each other. You can't get along with each other nitpicking every single thing that a person does. You just can't. The moment that you start doing that and telling a person that they need to change, that person that they've changed into is no longer the person that you were interested in. You are now, you have created your own monster. I don't know. I don't expect my wife to change. I like the way that she was when I first met her. <laughs> That's what drew me there. Get it? <laughs> you know? Oh no, you've got to you've got to change to because we've been in a relationship for this long, so you've got to change now. You realize how stupid you sound? You, no, it doesn't work that way. Okay. If you met this vibrant person that you fell in love with. You are supposed to want to keep that vibrant person so that you are able to keep falling in love with them. Do you understand? So that every day seems like something new. So that when you wake up and you you wake up in the morning, you look and you're happy about seeing this particular person. You know, that whole grudge thing, if you're married, you, you gotta be out of your damn mind. You wanna hold a grudge on the person that you claim that you love and then talk to me about unconditional love. Give me a freaking break. <laughs> Seriously, and you know, I'm talking like this, but you are, all, are the ones that open up this particular can of worms. That whole soulmate thing, how about you find your own soul first? If you just look inside yourself, and believe me, I'm talking from experience here, okay? I went through so many years of wondering when I was going to get my soulmate, you know, with my soulmate. With my soulmate. Oh Lord, I want my soulmate. Can you please bring me my soulmate? I am so lonely. Ah! Did you really cry? Did you really cry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've had many of nights that I know exactly. And guys, Where don't sit up and pretend like you don't do this because you do. Were you that lonely? I was, I was so lonely. So lonely. I was so utterly alone. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> oh, sh you women, you know better, you guys. When would I actually meet someone who appreciates me for what I am if they don't look at my boobs? When can I find someone? I don't want a person looking here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> You're creeping me out with that talk. I'm just telling you. Oh listen, God, I don't know but this is what I listen to. What do you mean? This is what I listen to. I listen to this all the time. Mm. All the time. Every day, at least once. So, Laura, do you see anything for me with a relationship? Oh, they ask you like, oh, yeah. kind of a lecture. <laughs> And a nice Is there a relationship that I can have with a nice Chianti and Fava beans? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, seriously, <clears throat> I will be happy to counsel you on your relationship. If you're having a relationship issue and you need some help, listen, I'm unbiased. So don't think that I'm always going to take the woman's side, although I am partial to women. I just am because I'm a very goddess conscious person. But at the same time, I am. Fair. If I see that you're bullying this guy, I'm going to tell you you're bullying this guy, and I'm going to tell him to man up and stop taking your bullying. He has done it before. <clears throat> he has done it before. Okay. Because I have listened to, to women butcher guys, and I say, okay, stop. That's enough. That is not your child. That is your husband. You don't talk to your husband that way. And I've looked at him and said, dude, seriously, man up. Say something. You don't have to be ugly. Just don't don't talk to this guy this way. If you got an issue, you can speak to your husband in an intelligent manner. And at the same time, guys, you don't hit. We don't hit. Let me say this again for emphasis. We don't hit. Yeah. 
What if the woman hits you? Well, you defend yourself. Now, if the woman hits you, listen, ladies, I, I'm done with you there. If you hit a guy and he hits you back, you deserved it. <laughs> Seriously. It's not the best mode of things, you know, because it's very easy sometimes to just, you know, catch the wrist and say, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> you know? But when it gets to that point, that means you two don't belong together. <laughs> okay? Seriously. And same time, I mean, you don't, you don't be hitting. You don't, you don't hit someone and then say, oh, you hit a girl. No. At the moment that you hit this guy, you are no longer a girl. You have become something else. And that man has every right to defend himself. Okay? Remember that. Don't do that. <clears throat> you don't have to be ugly in a relationship. Like I said, if you need help, I'll help you out. And if your kids are in the way, or you think that they're in the way, then somebody made a mistake. Okay? So these are, and for you parents that that choose to abuse your kids, listen. If you don't want your kids, give them to somebody else yeah. who wants them. Yeah. Just be honest about it. Hell, I'll take your kids. What? Oh, yeah. And you know that I would. You know, I've seen parents hurt children. That's not, no, you don't have to do that. If you don't want them, bring them to me. I'll take them. I'll be more than happy to take them. And I will make sure that they have a great life. Okay, just throwing that out there. Anyway, yes, many soulmates, many types of soulmates. Don't be fooled. You'll hear it now. There's a level of soulmate them that people really get. Come here, baby. Come here. Like, come on. Good girl. There's a level of soulmate them that people are way too involved with, and that is that that state that is called twin flame. No, you don't find your twin flame. You know what you do? You find that person that you are able to evolve with, and you become twin flame. Okay, let's get some perspective here. There are different types of soulmates, and that soulmate that will bond with you, that people, oh, we're twin flame. No, no. If you can sit and tell me that you're twin flame with someone and they can't be perceived, you're not. And if you can ask me whether or not someone is your soulmate, they are not. Do you understand? If you ask me, the answer is no. You should know. Okay? Just want to tell you that. This seems to be a talk about relationships because I, I know that people should really learn about relationships. You have to better yourself. All of you that are single and all of you that are wanting are looking for your dream person. Did you ever stop for one single moment to discover whether or not you were the dream? If you want your dream person, you become the dream. Okay? And there are some definite ways to do that. All right. So if you need help, I do teach. And you know where I can be reached, www.unicorn-co.com or www.asktheunicorn.com or Unicorn Co. School of Metaphysics, Standish, Maine, and that is area code 207 347 You want to feel better, you want to look better, you want to be in shape so that you can put yourself out there? Oh, I would be most happy to oblige you. Okay, we have another question now that you've ranted for 40 minutes Sorry. about soulmates. Well, someone asked me. We have a question from John. Hi, Jeff. Yeah, he says, I heard a bell, and I think it was more like a knife hitting a glass with a small ring just prior to 2 a.m. on April 20th. Astro bell. He says, I was sitting in my room with the door ajar, and I heard it come from outside the hallway. I walked outside to the garden in the silence, questioning my sanity, and I'm wondering what I heard. That was called an astral bell. There was someone trying to communicate with you. That's exactly what that was. It usually sounds like that. Now, if it sounds like a broken glass or a knife hitting a broken glass, that's not something you want to go and investigate. Do you understand? The moment you hear that, that's kind of like a warning. That's like a negative astral entity that is lurking about. And that's pretty good that you were able to hear that. You know, uh, I would look more into it and see what else you can hear. 
<clears throat> obviously you have the, some ability to hear C. So uh, if you have more instances like that, give me a call and we can talk about how to deal with it. That's pretty good though. Uh, Brian and Michelle say hi. Hello. Hi Brian and Michelle. Hello, Brian and Michelle, and how are you this evening? Brian asks a question. Certainly. He says, can you do a short reading for me without me calling, or is that not possible? Sure, I can. As soon as you go and uh, pay the rate for me doing a reading. I don't do readings for free. This is, uh, we have another, we have a shout-out from Dawn. She says... Hey, Aurora, congrats on the bread bakery. Thank you very, very much, Don. 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 I said Don, didn't I? I think you said Donna. I said Don. Don. Thank you very much, Don. You know how many people have got, tried to get me to do readings for them this way? Uh, I have reached for my readings. If I decide to give you a reading uh, because you need it at that particular moment, I'll be more than happy to do so. I guess it's because it says on the website that you will do short readings for live callers. Uh, sometimes, when it's needed, yes. But at the moment, it's not needed for me. You were merely inquiring. Okay, but if you'd like a reading, give me a call. Or email. I don't care. Uh, that is all the questions I have so far. But if you are going to get a reading from me and you're asking for that, <coughs> I will do a reading for you. But you need to follow the protocol because I operate under an exchange rule for everything that is given. There must be given in something in exchange. And uh, that means that you will make a donation for the reading. Yes. And what's next? That's all we got. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Goodness, you people are talkative tonight. How many viewers want to make? That's okay. Oh, vacation. <clears throat> right. I don't know. Well, um, for those of you that have questions, you can always give us a call or you can uh, contact us at uh, www.asktheunicorn.com and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions that you have. All of you know that have watched the show before that I will answer anything that is pertaining to the metaphysical, the spiritual, the mystical, and the paranormal, with the exception of two things. Two questions I do not answer under any circumstances is whether or not someone is going to die or whether or not someone is cheating on someone else. So if you want to know, then you need to deal with that person up front. Okay, that's fair. Otherwise, it's just being cowardly. Okay. Well, it looks as though we don't have uh, many questions this evening. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that I've ranted for long enough. <laughs> so, um, what should we <clears throat> review on Deadlands? Well, not many people have seen Deadlands. So I'll wait until Deadlands is actually oh, been seen. Okay. okay. All right. So I'd like to thank you all for joining us on Ask the Unicorn this evening. Uh, as you do know, I teach classes, I do not teach for free. This is not my hobby, this is my life. And what I what I what I do what I do. So, uh, you can find out about classes by visiting our website, and that is again www.unicorn-cope.com. And uh, you can inquire about the classes that are there. <clears throat> Give us a call here at area code two zero seven three four seven five six eight six. The classes run in six week segments or a semester segment. That's totally up to you, and we can arrange it either in person or via Skype. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for being on the show. Please tell your friends about it. The more people that are on the show, the longer the show goes, and also the better the show gets. So until next week, you all have a wonderful weekend. Hello to everybody that are students of, that are students of mine, and I hope you all have a wonderful week. Thank you very much. Unicorn out.